today our learning target is I can solve a system of equations by using the equal values method. So we have talked a little bit already in class about how you can solve a system by graphing or what it actually means to solve a system. So when you're solving a system of equations, what you're actually looking for is where are those two lines intersecting on a graph? Where are those lines intersecting? What's that point? Because that point is going to tell us where those equations have the same um, values that make it true. So I'm going to start first by doing an example with graphing. So I have two equations, y equals 6x and then y equals 2x plus 4. So I'm going to start with the y equals 6x. So I'll go, that one has a y-intercept of 0 because it's just 6x. There's no adding or subtracting of something. And then my change is 6. So I'm going to go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 1. And then I'll make another point here, down 6, over 1. So here is my first line. Then if I graph the second line, we're going to start at 4 because this is my y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go um, of a change of positive 2, so up 2 over 1. And if I did another point, it would be down 2 over 1. So you can see here that my point of intersection is right here. So that would be a value of 1 for the x and and 6 for the, the y. So what that point's telling me is that's where the lines intersect. And then if I actually put that 1, 6 into both of the equations, it would work in both of those equations. So 1, 6 are the values of x and y that make both of those equations true. So now we can use graphing to do it, but a lot of times when you're graphing things, it's, um, I mean, it's not the most convenient because you have to get graph paper and set it up and graph the lines. It takes a while. And especially when you get that point of intersection, it's not always going to be at a whole number. It could be at a fraction or decimal. So we need to have some other ways to solve it. The graphing is a good visual, but we're going to have some different methods to solving systems that are algebraic. So the method I'm going through in this video is the equal values method. You oftentimes hear it called the setting equal method as to um, setting equal method as well. So when you use this is when you have an equation that is like y equals y equals. So when you have the same variable being equal to something. So how the steps go is the first thing is you're going to set them equal. See how I put the 6x on one side of the equal sign? and the 2x plus 4 on the other side of the equal sign. That's why it's called the equal values or setting equal because they're going to be equal to each other. And the reason why I can do that is because they're each equal to y. Now, if you look at what I have written out, it should look like something you've seen before. It's just like the regular equation that we've solved. So now you just go through and you solve it. So I'd subtract 2x from both sides. That's going to give me 4x equals 4. Continue to solve it. x equals 1. So that's going to be my x-coordinate. Remember, when you're solving a system, we're looking for a point of intersection. So the x is 1. I still need the y. So what you do is you choose one of the equations to put x into. So I usually look and see which equation is a little bit easier. If you put 1 into the y equals 6x, we figure out that y is 6. But you also could have put it into the other equation. See how I still get 6 for an answer? Because 1, 6 is what makes both of those equations true. So your solution, written as an ordered pair, should be 1, 6. Here's another example. I'm going to again show you what this looks like when I graph it. So the first equation is y equals 2x plus 1. So I start at the y-intercept. My change is a positive 2, so I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Could even go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So here is my line. Then let's go to the second one, 4x minus 5. I start at negative 5. And then I go up 4 over 1. Up 4 over 1. Up 4 over 1. 
Ooh, it meets way at the top there. Oh, there we go. Almost didn't know where it was going to intersect. So that is going to be my point of intersection. So it's at 3 and 7. Yes, 3, 7. Okay, so you can see those lines are intersecting at the point 3, 7. So there's how it looks in the graph using the equal values method. Remember, the first step is we're going to take both of these. One goes on one side of the equal sign. One goes on the other side. And then I just solve it like an equation. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That's going to equal 2x minus 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And that's going to be 2x equals 6. So my x value is equal to 3. Now I'm going to decide, okay, so if x is 3, I'm going to plug it back into one of the equations. I'm going to plug it into the top one. That one seems maybe a little bit easier to work with. So 2 times 3, see how I plugged that 3 in for the x, and then I get 6 plus 1. So remember when those lines intersected, we said 3, 7? Well, here it verifies that 3, 7, written as an ordered pair, is my point of intersection and the solution to the system. Okay, I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to have you try the next one. So I'll do one more. You're probably seeing how, how I go about in solving it, how I go about solving it, and how it is very, very similar to what we've done in the past. So I'm solving for x. I put both equations next to each other. So 12x plus 3 equals 9 minus 3. That's going to be 12x equals 6. One thing here that I oftentimes will get, people will say 6 divided by 12 is 2 because they see a 6 and a 12. But look at this fraction, 6 over 12. That's actually equal to half. So x is equal to 12. And then, I, or x is equal to half, not 12. And then I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to avoid the negative numbers just because I'm more likely to make a mistake with that. I'm going to plug x as half into this equation. So half of 8 is 4 plus 3. I get 7. So my point of intersection is half and 7. So one last problem. I do want you to try to do this on your own. Pause the video, turn it back on, and I will go through what you should have done. All right. Set it up like this. We have an equation like that, that equal on both sides. I am going to add half. I could also um, change that to a decimal if I wanted to. So 3.5x minus 4 equals 3. Add 4 to both sides. 3.5x equals 7. Well, when I go and I take 7, um, when I take 7 and I divide it by 3.5, that is going to be 2, because 2 3.5s fit into 7. Okay, so then, let's see, I am going to plug that into the top equation so that I don't have to mess around with the negative half. So I do 3 times 3.5 minus 4. So 3 times 3.5 minus 4 gives me 6.5. So my final answer is going to be, I'll write it right down here, 3.5 for the x value and then 6.5 for the um, y value. And especially a problem like this, if I would have graphed it, that would have been a messy graph. I would not have known for sure, most likely, where those points were intersecting. So that's why we need to have a method like this so that we can solve it algebraically. And this is one of the methods that you're going to learn this year.